we are on the verge of another industrial revolution, and many countries across the world may not be ready for it. Here's why. I'm Artsy, and this is our development series. If you're interested in these types of videos, don't forget to hit the like button, comment, share, and subscribe. Now let's get into it. The fourth industrial revolution is driven by emerging technologies like artificial intelligence, robotics, blockchain, the internet of things, and biotechnology, which are transforming industries at a rapid pace. However, several challenges contribute to a country's lack of readiness. For example, do they have the technological infrastructure to support this new economy? In order for emerging technologies like AI and internet of things to work, you need reliable access to the internet. And many developing countries have uneven access to high speed internet, reliable electricity, and advanced telecommunications, thereby limiting their ability to fully participate in the digital economy. This creates a digital divide because while some members of the population have access to this infrastructure, many do not. Now, over the years, you can see how Jamaica has been trying to prepare for this digital takeover. They have been trying to find ways to close the digital divide and connect everyone to the internet equally. As this article states, Jamaica has accelerated the build-out of its national broadband initiative to facilitate the rollout of high-speed internet access across the island. In addition, the Universal Service Fund has been providing free Wi-Fi internet access access points in major town centers, public green spaces and parks, and communities across the island. The Universal Service Fund is an agency under the Ministry of Science, Energy, and Telecommunications and Transport, which is mandated to ensure access to information and communication tools to facilitate development. One of its projects is the Community Wi-Fi program, which is designed to increase access to the internet across Jamaica's 63 constituencies. This access should allow for general digital inclusion. And they have had some form of help over the years. For example, at the 28th session of the United Nations Conference of the Parties, COP28, held in Dubai, Nigel Clark, Jamaica's Minister of Finance, officially entered into a financial advisory services agreement with the International Finance Corporation, the private sector subsidiary of the World Bank. This groundbreaking agreement is a pivotal step in the development and structuring of the National Broadband projects set to be established as a dynamic public-private partnership, PPP. Remember when we learned what that was? Number two, the country's workforce needs to have the digital skills necessary to operate in such an economy. For example, most of the working population in many developing countries do not currently have the digital literacy and technological skills needed to engage effectively with AI and robotics, for example. So what can be done? People currently in the workforce would need to be reskilled or upskilled, and this needs to be done at a pace that matches the growth of this technology. The education system would also need to be revamped. The curriculum needs to be designed to equip students with the skills needed for the digital age. There needs to be an emphasis on STEM or STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and maths, so that the present and upcoming workforce does not struggle to adapt adapt to new technological demands. As was shared in several of our developments in Jamaica videos, Jamaica is gearing up to establish STEAM schools nationwide, kicking off with one in St. Anne. Now, STEAM or STEM represents an interdisciplinary approach to learning and problem solving that integrates knowledge and skills from these five core disciplines. Recently, Jamaica and the World Bank signed a $30 million deal to enhance teaching practices, inclusivity, and learning conditions for the Jamaica Education Program, JEP, spearheaded by the Ministry of Education and Youth. The JEP seeks to elevate the state of secondary education, placing a special focus on enriching the education system. So we are working on the education system. Now let's talk about 
economics. Number three, there's already an economic divide within and between countries. A digital divide will only widen the gap. The wealth disparity within and between countries leads to wealthier countries, wealthier people, wealthier businesses, and wealthier communities already having access to digital infrastructures. They also have the financial means to more easily invest in automation and advanced technologies. While poorer nations, poorer people, small businesses, and poorer communities may struggle to keep up, leading to increased economic inequality and a growing gap in the digital divide, each perpetuating the other. Number four. Now, of course, the disparity between countries will affect geopolitical and global competition. Countries like that are already technology leaders will benefit more in the fourth industrial revolution because they basically already have their foot in the door while less technologically advanced or poorer countries will be left behind making global inequality even worse than it is now but there has been a push by global powers to get poor countries into the digital age I have a question for you though. Why do these countries want to eliminate digital inequality among countries? Is it a matter of care, concern, or control? Let me know in the comments. Here are some other reasons many countries may not be ready outside of technology skill set and economic disparity. Number five, then we have the inevitable effect of growth of automation and AI job loss. This is a great concern for many. The fact is the rise of this digital age will likely lead to many low skill jobs in areas like manufacturing and the service industry being replaced. If a country has a majority of its population working in affected industries, they will face a significant increase in unemployment if adequate social safety nets and retraining programs are not put in place. I must point out that there are even more industries that will be affected. Can you think of any? If so, share them with us. Number six, lack of awareness. There are many people in Jamaica, for example, that are not even aware or better yet understand the fourth industrial revolution and what it may involve. This is especially true in rural areas and small businesses, and the few that are aware of it may be wary of this new modus operandi. This fear of change may be because of the fear of possible job loss or lack of trust in this new technology. Can you think of any other reasons they may have to fear this technology? In 2020, when the pandemic was in full swing, I remember hearing quite a few taxi drivers saying that they are putting up 4G towers during the lockdown and that's what's causing COVID. Have you heard of this story? Both the fear and possible lack of awareness will definitely affect the population's readiness to adopt. I know that in society, regardless of the innovation, some people are always early adopters and others are always late adopters. Which one would you say you are and why? Are you like me and don't want to hear about the benefits without hearing about the costs? Because isn't that the only responsible way to approach decision making? Number seven, apart from fear and lack of awareness, there may be environmental and ethical concerns. For example, the digital age comes with increased energy consumption and over the years, it could be said that Jamaica has been facing an energy crisis either intermittently or consistently. When you couple this with e-waste, would you say we are ready to sustain the fourth industrial revolution? That definitely needs to be sorted out in preparation. By the way, note this article. Then we have the ethical dilemma of transhumanism, which according to Britannica is a philosophical and scientific movement that advocates the use of current and emerging technologies such as genetic engineering, cryonics, artificial intelligence, and nanotechnology to augment human capabilities and improve the human condition. Anyone who is excited for this has not fully considered all the implications. For example, loss of privacy, loss of legal control of your consciousness, inequality because not everyone will be able to afford these upgrades, 
and so much more. I promise you, if you're able to see what I see as our possible future, if we continue on this path, you would not be so excited. So, are we ready for the fourth industrial revolution? Are you ready? Mm -hmm.